Hi everybody, welcome to part two of the ZX81 TS1000 Reparathon. I had to say it right, it's not ZX81, it's ZX. So I said ZX and from now on it's ZX81. Today I'm going to start with number three of the list, the TS1000 number three, the one that after we did our testing came out basically everything's perfect, it was in stock, it was in stock shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to expand the RAM. I'm going to add 16K internally to it. Now, you may be wondering why there's a hole there. Because I already filmed part of this and my soldering iron touched it and burnt it. That sucks. So part of this repair thon is I'm going to have to trim that back. So to get started on this one, we need to take it all apart, as I just did, pull everything out, unhook the keyboard, set that to the side. Then, another reason why I'm using this one is, I'm going to add a composite mod to this one, which means I'm going to swap out this ULA with the Franken Pooter because this is the ULA, the later version, it doesn't have the back porch, so it doesn't do the composite mod very well without support chips. But one of the reasons why I wanted to use this one is it already has a socketed 28 pin chip, whereas the other ones don't, and I have to add a socket. So this one's a good start. Previously, I was using, or previously, like in my first version of this filming, I was using a walkthrough on how to add the 16K, and that walkthrough is wrong. Luckily, I didn't destroy anything or damage the computer other than the fact that I burnt the membrane on the keyboard. So, first thing I'm doing is I'm pulling out this 2K chip. I'm going to save that. Don't want to lose those chips. Then I have these that I purchased. I purchased four. There's three in this pack. The fourth one is in the other room, which I have to remove solder from and then test it again. I purchased these on eBay. They were. Five dollars a piece, twenty dollars or nineteen something for all four of them, shipped to me. There's sixty-two two fifty-six, which means they're thirty-two k SRAM chips. We're only using one or sixteen k of it. The other thirty, the other sixteen k, though technically I could wire it in. I'm not worrying about that right now. I tested these on my EPOM burner, my TO eight six six plus, which I'll put a little inset in here right now. All right, so I want to show you how I test an SRAM. This is a 62256, which is a 32K SRAM. I have the software is XG Pro. It's on my laptop here. Then I have a TO866 Plus, which is an EEPROM burner, but it also lets you test things. So I take my RAM, I put it inside of here, lock it in place. Then in the software, I come up and I select the IC, which in this case is SRAM, it's a standard SRAM 62256, select that one, and it pops up immediately and wants me to test it. So I click test, and I'll hold this over here so you can see that it's what it's doing there. When I click test, it's communicating with it and it's reading everything on there and making sure that the RAM chip is good. So there you see, that's how I tested them. And what we need to do with this is very simple. We need to, this is the pinout for the 6256, and what we need to do is we need to add support for these additional address lines, 8, 10, 11, 14, and 13. The rest are in there, which is fascinating that it didn't touch A12. Why is that? Maybe we're okay. And then what we do is we wire those over to these diodes here. And I got a blob of solder on that one I don't like. This should be okay. I'll connect to it. We're going to connect A14 to D1, A10 to D2, A11 to D3, and A13 to D5. This side of the diode. I could get over on this side too if I wanted. I could just run the wires around the back. That might be easier than trying to reach in here. We'll see. So first thing I need to do is I need to bend these pins up. I need to bend up pins 1, 26, 23, and 21. So I get my tweezers. You wonder why I have that here that I'm going to be using that for soldering in a bit? 
It helps hold things. I'm going to pin, bend up pin one. Like that. Pin 26, which is the third one down. Like that. Pin 23. 28, 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, and pin 21. Those are the pins we're going to make changes to. Now I'm going to snip off the little legs there. Over in the UK they may call these things nippers. Over here I call it a cuticle cutter. It works good. You don't have to have expensive tools to do things. You just have to have tools that work. All right, those legs are gone. Bye bye legs. Now I'm gonna take my little breadboard. This is an older one that I like to use for just soldering. It holds things in place nicely so they don't bounce around on me. Keeps the legs stiff, stops things from happening. Move things out of my way. Put that up there. This back here. Let's get out my solder and my flux. My iron has been running. I want to tin these with some solder so that later on sticking the wires to it is really easy. I dip my solder in my flux a little bit. And I come in here, let's just make sure you can see what I'm doing here. And I just heat up the solder to get it to flow in there. Just like that. That make it easier later to make the wires stick when I'm ready to put wires on them. Okay. So I got four wires to hook up. I'm going to go get some wire. Okay, so now I have everything set up I need. What I've decided to do, instead of just running the wires from here to these here, I'm going to run the wires across the top and around to the back portion of it. That way I'm not trying to sneak down in here and connect on to that. Because they are a little difficult to get to. So I got a piece of ribbon wire. It's got four colors on it. I wrote down the colors I want. I'm going to use green, yellow, orange, and red. And I'm just going to take these off here. Like the green. Then I'll split the other ones up to go to there. Take my side in there, remove my glasses, make sure the wire is twisted, if it wasn't twisted, make sure it is. Take the green, put it on there, get rid of any excess I got on that, and just Alright, soldering iron, are you not hot enough yet? Is that a good deal? No, well, she's hot enough. Green. Now I'm going to do yellow to that one. So let's just split these down. I probably should have split them before I got here, but let's put them down now. So yellow and orange. Split down. Thank you. Okay, now the yellow. Right there. So let's just cut it shorter. Off some of the that the insulation 
Let's see if we can just attach that right there. Yeah, I'm not happy with that solder joint at all. Come on, let go though. Yeah, this solder, I don't understand it. It liquefies, then as soon as it hardens, it's like almost impossible to get it to come loose again. It's like it changes state from once it melts. Oh, that's hot. So that one's in, yellow. I'm gonna do the orange. Experience with the battery operated soldering irons? Are they any good? And this is okay. This is getting me now. Now I'm just trying to get upset at this thing. Stay twisted, wires. Thank you. I don't need you praying all over the place on me. Why are you you're still doing it? I twisted you? Do you need to be tinned together? Is that your issue? You guys need to be tinned. Probably. Yeah, again, see, right there, see? Now the solder doesn't want to melt. Can you stop making little peeps? Thank you. Now the next one, let's try to avoid that. See if I can get this one to twist some. Then get it to tin some. All right, then get it to stick. Oh, that one easy. Maybe I'll do the last one the same way. Alright, so now we have my three wires attached to it, as you can see. Not a pretty job, but it is connected very well. So, I remove that, try not to drop it. Bring the board over here, and I put it into the board. And, as I said, and I put it in the board. Get some of the legs get a little bent. There. Now this is a, I'm sorry, again I went off camera. This is a TS-1000, which means that this jumper here, LK2, is connected. This LK is how much RAM you have. The TS-1000s have 2K of RAM, so that's connected. If you have a ZX81, odds are LK2 is not connected, instead LK1 is or it's not connected at all. What you need to do is you have to jumper LK2. That needs to be jumpered for this to come into effect, for this to work. So now we're gonna rotate this over. So we have our diodes right here. Oh, my eyes back on. 
our diodes right here, D1 through D8, right there. So I'm just going to flip over, and we can see that they are over here. They're the reverse. So they connect over to here, too. So we have all these pads to work with. D1 through D8. And I, they even have numbers on them, so we know which ones are what. Now, let's see how much wire I want to keep in here. I'm going to go right to about here. Give me a little excess to play with. It. So I'm going to cut it right there. Then split these out so I have some movement. And I wrote down my colors on my sheet here so I know which one goes where. I know green goes to one, red goes to two, orange goes to three, yellow goes to five. Not in the same order that they are on there. So first thing I do, split that wire open. I remove the insulation, twist it, tin it, just a little bit, not a lot of tin on this one, let's get all that excess off, because we already have some tin on here, there's some solder already on here, so there, green one's up for one, now we go red goes to two, And this is a non-destructive modification, as you notice. All I'm doing is adding some wires. I'm not changing the circuit board at all. So this can be undone easy enough. Heck, just unplugging that RAM chip and sticking the 2K RAM back in will undo this. So, red, red goes to two. Two, orange goes to three. Orange. Now, if you're colorblind, this may not work for you. You may you probably want to do individual wires instead of using the living table that's color coded. Orange goes to three. Double check. I seem to put, need some more solder on that one. Uh, you know what? I just realized something. This won't work this way. It's on the wrong side of the cathode, or on the diode. It has to be on this side of the diode. So I have to be out here. <laughs> okay. No big deal. They're right here. Here's one through eight again. Let's see. Let's see. Where's eight? The straight line, so we have eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one right there. So I just got to do it that way. All right, back up. Green goes to one out here. A little bit more difficult, but not impossible. A little nippers. I'm going to cut some of this excess wire off. The less wire I have, the less chance of getting a short anywhere. And where's the file? My old Franken file, or like the Munsters that they used to do the nails. It really works getting the carbon off of that. Put a little bit of on there. Get these wires lined up again. Green is going to one, and one is right here. Green to one. Green to one. All right. Red to two. Again, I'm going to put some of excess here. I'm glad I caught that because if it was on the other side of the diode, I don't think it would have worked. I think that diode is there to stop the any signal coming from the keyboard. 
I'm going out onto the address lines. The ZX81, the design of it is like a marvel of ingenuity and small how they designed it. Figure out how to get the most out of those chips. Where now they wouldn't do this. Nowadays, you want to get on the computer. They don't care. They'll just throw shit at it. They don't care about trying to save a penny here or a dollar there. They'll make it back from the customer. But we need to write a program that adds one plus one. All right, so we're back. I had to change the battery. I had a battery die on me. So let's put on orange. Goes to D3. Okay, orange to D3, and now yellow is going to go to D5. Fascinating. Yellow gave me problems with it fraying apart on the other side, not staying twisted together, and it's doing the same on this side. Was you made out of bad wire, yellow? Independent wire? There we go. All right. So now we've got them all wired in there. I can take this right now. Unplug the soldering iron. I'm just going to plug it into the on it to the TV here without a keyboard. I'll be able to tell if it works. First off, if it gives me a K prompt. Then I can also tell if the actual 16K is recognized because it will take longer to get that K prompt. So power up. And see what we got here. Remember, sometimes, okay, we got a K-prompt, that's a good thing. Let's see if I can see if I can get it to, how long it takes to get there. See, the problem is I can't see it on the screen because it takes forever for it to sink into place. We got the delay there too, that's good. Which means we do have 16K in there. Once I get the keyboard in, I'll do the test just to see what RAM top is. But we got 16K in there, that's great. So that did work. I didn't ruin it. And I just gotta watch when my wires go here. What I can do is I can take and just put, take a piece of electrical tape right there just to hold it in place. All right, good. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna do the Composite mod. So I'm going to get that all set up here. Get my tabletop cleaned up. Swap the ULA out with Frank Computer, and we're going to do the composite mod and see how that works. All right. So I'm back here working on number three. It's been a few days. I had to, well, not had to. I had some visitors come out of come out of town, and I had to get some work done. The observer among you may notice something slightly different on this board. 
I pulled the RF modulator out and I did the simple transistor mod so I can get composite out and it didn't work. My ULA doesn't like it. I swapped the ULA with another one. It still didn't like it. I thought I could go back and repair my modulator, but eh, I said, you know what? I got Frankenpooter number four, so I just pulled the modulator out and put it in there. Which is fascinating because when I pulled the modulator out of there, I saw solder joints and there was a piece of wire inside. This piece of wire to be exact. Which means that the guy that had it before me tried to do the simple transistor mod on it too, and I guess he wasn't happy with the results. So, I had to put the modulator back in from the other one, wire it up, and test it out. It all worked out good. While I was working on this, my errant soldering iron decided to melt some membrane. <laughs> so I got to do the old membrane trim to put this back together. Which is probably a good thing because that way you get to see what it's like to have to trim the membrane. To do that is kind of easy. I'm going to, first off, I want to make sure that they're the same size. So I'm going to take this. How much do I want to cut off? I'm going to cut off to, I'm going to start it at the original line. So I'm going to be cutting off like a quarter inch. So I'm going to go to right about, is that going to make me? Yeah, right about there. Okay. Go there. Then trim up that piece. It feels sacrilegious to be cutting that off, the old membrane. But it has to go. And this one was a nice one too. It worked. And cut out the excess plastic over here. Carefully cut it off. I don't want to go into my membrane. Make it smaller still. All right, that one's done. Now the other one I got to shorten the same way. I'm going to trim it down the same size to there. Then I'm going to cut it here. Now look at this. Did I melt the plastic there? Is it? Nope, it's still good. It's still good there. It didn't break it. Then I'm going to take this and trim off the excess. There. Good is almost new. Almost as good as new. Now I had this thought on how to slip these back in because they are hard to get in. I was wondering, what if I take and use some rubbing alcohol in here, just as like a lubricant, just to make it easier to slide them in. But let them sit for a bit. I'll pause the camera after I do that so they don't dry. So that was my thought. So let's see, where are we gonna go? We're gonna go that way, so you're gonna come here. So I'm going to try that. I've never thought about it before. But let's try it. Let's squirt some rubbing alcohol in here. Just to get it wet. Rubbing alcohol evaporates so quick. This should have no issue. This one always goes first because it's... The other one goes around it, so... I'm in the way, I'm sorry, I'm, uh, I'm trying to make it so you can see, but if you can't see it... Yeah, I can tell you right now, rubbing alcohol is the bomb. That stuff worked right in, slid right in without even having any issues of it not going in. Okay, now let's get this one to go in. Okay. Come on, you can do it. Come on, come on. Slide in. This one's a little bit more difficult. I think it's not wide enough. The, the holes. Well, maybe not. More alcohol in there. The first one went in real easy. Maybe this is drying up. Let's try this again. I'm doing my best not to bend it. 
but you kind of have to bend it. Well, not have to bend it, but you kind of almost bend it, trying to push it in. Get in here. It just is catching when I'm going in. It just, it just keeps flopping around. Why are you catching like that, huh? There's nothing in the way. Where are my tweezers? I should just put my tweezers up here on my magnetic holder because I keep pulling them out and have to them. Then I throw them back in here when I'm done. Except I don't think I threw them back in the last time. So where did I do Oh, there they are. Let's see if I can get the tweezers here to get like a grip on it. See. I can get the tweezers in there. Grip it. The tweezers ain't even holding it, they're just sliding right away. Yeah, you not going in, you're just being very difficult here. Very, very difficult. This one went in with no problem. Slipped right in. But this one is being a beast. Yeah, it's just not going in. All right, let's pause this camera. I'm gonna do it off camera. Okay, I'm back. All right, what I ended up doing is, first off, I trimmed it a little shorter. Give me some more excess, some more room. I took a piece of vinyl from the RF modulator that I pulled apart the part that went out here. And I trimmed it down and I was able to slip that inside of the contacts to get the metal contacts apart while I'm sliding in the thing. And it worked. So, well, as far as I can tell, it worked. Now, I have to rotate you that way. And hopefully nothing pops out while I do it. It's a very small computer to work with. It's it's very hard sometimes to actually do work on these things. But now that we got that far, let's put it back together the rest of the way, and we're testing. Hopefully, the keyboard works, and I don't have to go through this process again with this one. Because this one, and again, now I'm gonna look at the base here to see which screws I'm working with. This screw. Yeah, like I said, that screw. Goes there. Then the other screw comes up here. Yeah, I had to replace this. I had to uh, replace the modulator. Add some extra wiring so the new mo the old modulator will fit in. Yeah, resolder that back in place. Now let me just look in here, just make sure you didn't pop loose. You look good. Like you're still in the slot. Alright, set you on there. I'm not going to put you back together yet. <laughs> Turn the television on. The signal is not too great for some reason with this TV. When I go over to my LCD one on the other, pa or the other table, it works out really good. Now why am I not getting any kind of television signal? We are plugged in. We are on channel two. 
We are connected up back here. Now why am I not getting any? No response at all. All right, where did I break? You are there and you are plugged in back here. I'm getting, was you not plugged in? Maybe I wasn't getting a good connection. See the issue I'm having here with the screen? That is, this monitor is giving me a, no, old TV is giving me issues. Sinking. Is this... Why are you doing it? When I, when I close you, why are you getting all out of whack? Yeah, okay. Hey, you don't, you're not happy about something. What is it? Are you touching? Is that touching there? That may be touching. Let's see something here. No, it's not getting anywhere near it. What is going on? Why are you doing this when I close you? Okay, well, I just want to check the keyboard on this one. This monitor is a pain in the ass. Excuse my language. It has a hard time syncing up. But as you can see, yeah, we're, we're, you, you're gonna go. I don't like you anymore, monitor. I got this one free. I found it. Somebody had a yard sale. You know, people have yard sales the next day. It's whatever they didn't sell. They threw out there and, hey, free. And I drove past. I said, that looks cool. I'll get that. It worked. I've had it for like six years now. Five years. But maybe it's dying. But the keyboard is working. So I'm going to say number three is back alive. So let's put back number three back together. Let's turn you off. And I'm going to bring my other monitor out to you, or my other TV, I keep saying monitor, my other TV out, my LCD one, I'm going to put it over here, because the signal on that is beautiful. I mean, I can't believe how well it syncs up to this TS-1000, but it does. So, we're going to put this back together. Oh, you know what, Bill? You're making a mistake. I know everybody at home is like, Bill, 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 stop, Millie, 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 wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Let's just say, hopefully, I didn't make too much of a mistake. Remember back in the beginning, I said, you got to watch these screws because there's two different sizes. And sometimes you get talking and you don't even realize you're doing it. Ow. Oh, good. It didn't come up to the bottom. Small screws going to the front. That's why I was having a hard time getting them to seat in. So small screws go out in the front. Big screws go back here. Three of them. One. Come on. This was a magnetic screwdriver. I don't know what happened to it. Makes me almost think that they like painted the magnetism on it. Which I don't know, is that possible? Now I've got to put the feet on it. I got one, two, three. Give me one more that matches it. Four feet. And I got some double-sided tape down here I'm going to use. I'm not gonna crazy glue them in place or anything, which I've done in the past. I'm just going to use some double-sided sticky tape on the bottom of each one of these. Get the old tape off first. All right, now you, come here. 
I just, <laughs> I just thought, why is my microphone cable making noise? And I realized I never plugged it in. Good thing my bench camera up here also records records the mic, the volume or the audio. Otherwise, I would have been like, hey, this is for the silent film error. Anywho. It's been a long week. But I'm going to reattach these on here. Give it a nice little wipe down with some Windex and a paper towel. And then I'll, I'll rotate the camera so you can see it. I'm going to plug it into a good monitor and I'll show you how good she works and I see that my lovely office neighbor has decided that everybody in the world needs to know what kind of music she likes in this case all I know is it sounds like she's got her iPhone turned up all the way so it's just tinny I've asked her a number of times not to. I have a sign on my door. It says YouTube. On air. Videoing. She ignores it. It's a generational thing, I think. I think the young... And I don't want to be the old fart that says, Oh, it's the younger kids. Don't listen. So, but it is a generational thing. They seem to think that... Everybody wants to hear their music. Not everybody likes their music. Not everybody wants to hear music all the time. Sometimes we'd like to have some peace and quiet. Not even peace and quiet, just not to have our ears assaulted by the sound of tin. <laughs> so there we go, that's that. Let's get my paper towel, and I'm gonna just give her a wipe down. Windex is nice because it dries quickly and you don't get high from the fumes. If you like wipe it down with rubbing alcohol, you, you, get, you get high from it. Alright, so there we go. We're all hooked up now. Now I'm going to pause everything and I'm going to switch to the other camera and we're going to go over and look at it on the computer or on the LCD. Alright, so now I've got it over here hooked up to the LCD and as you can see the screen is much better on this LCD than it ever was on that TV. And I just want to do a quick test, just to test the memory. Again, no RAM pack in here. Print, peak, 16388 plus 256 times peak, 16389. And I should get 32768, which I do. We now have 16K inside. Awesome. And I do believe, I'm not going to test it right now, but I do believe if I was to plug in my memo pack 16 and then plug a RAM pack behind it, I do believe I would get 32K because I believe plugging this in overrides what's in there. You know what? Let's try that. Let's just try that just for gets and shiggles. If you don't know what gets and shiggles are, switch the first letters of gets and shiggles. And you'll know what I mean. So, now we gotta remember this one is the one that gives me issues because it doesn't have, oh, I should do it this way first. It doesn't have a key to line up the little pins, so I gotta make sure I line them up exactly right. Otherwise. I may not get memory. And then plug this one back there. And now I should be set up for 32K as long as I'm lining up correctly. Let's just see what happens. Let's just see what we get. I believe I have to poke it first. So let's do the poke. What did I have to poke it to? Um, 190. So poke 16389, comma, 190. And then do a new. Hmm. 
It's taking longer to initialize this, so that's a good good sign. P16388 plus 256 times peak 16389. Now I should get 48,000 and something if the 32K is being registered. I do. So this does override the 16K inside. So even though I got 16K inside, I can always plug ex external things on here and it overrides that. So it's not a modification that makes it impossible to do other things. I can always plug in this and have 32K or if I had a 64K one, that's pretty cool. So there we go. That was computer number three. Next one I'll do, as you can see, I got my stack of them over here. Next I'll probably do computer number one, which just needs the keyboard fixed. So that's gonna be another trim. That's gonna be an easy one. And then I'll do number two, which appears to just need the keyboard fix also. Actually, I think number one needs an actual new membrane. Maybe I can salvage that one. Number three was Frankenpooter, which was a mess, and Frankenpooter may not get fixed. Frankenpooter may just continue to be my parts machine, or Frankenpooter may just, if you don't recall what Frankenpooter was, this was Frankenpooter. And you can see this where I stole the RF modulator from it. So Frankenpooter may just be a parts machine. Frankenpooter may just be one where I, yeah, it's a mess. It's probably gonna be parts machine. But there we go. Number one's finished. Or number three's finished. Next I'll do number one. Number two, maybe I'll combine them together and make one video. Have a good one.